are listening to the Moms in Business podcast, where we get real about all the things on balancing motherhood and still having a thriving business. It is my goal that you hear from real moms, you hear real stories on mindset, time management strategies, and even the moments of crying in the shower, because we have all been there. I'm your host, Misty Shaheen, life and business coach for moms who want the freedom to live life on their own terms without sacrificing their health or family time. Welcome to the Moms in Business podcast. And today I have a special guest. I have Clara on the line. Hello, Clara. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. Awesome. So first of all, I ask everyone on the show, what is your zodiac sign? Oh, I'm a Libra. You're a Libra. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. beautiful. So I like to have everything in harmony and balance. Yes, right. I think Libra is one of my favorite signs of the whole zodiac. Well, naturally. <laughs> <laughs> They're so good in like relationships. You know, if you find a Libra at a party, she is just, she's talking to everybody and they're just so fun to be around. Oh, yeah. It's good. What are you? I'm a Leo. I was going to say, Leo, strong sign, strong woman sign. Yep, for sure. I'm so excited. So can you tell us what is it that you do? Absolutely. So I am a trainer, a speaker, an author, and a coach. And I focus primarily with women in business, moms in business. And I really have a keen focus to not only help them run a better business, but to really make sure that they're not losing sight of their life at the same time. So I work with them on a lot of strategies to leverage their time, to really focus on building businesses by relationship, to you know manage distractions, and also just to make sure that they're making time for themselves and, you know, being able to just live the best lives that they can. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's so easy when we get in business, we have all of these visions of how it's going to go, but then life happens. And a lot of times we get sidetracked and we can get so caught up into the details or things that are not going the way we want. So easy to get sidetracked and kind of lose that vision. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So have you always done this? How did you know that you like to do this? I think innately I did, but I sort of, you know, took a long detour to get there. So I started coaching. I got my first coaching certification in 2004 and I have a couple others. I have my master's in organizational communication and leadership, but I really started doing it more full time in about 2009 and it's where my heart is. I love it. I love helping people, having them see different ways of doing things, being able to bring in their own law of authenticity. And I learned most of it by mistakes on my own. You know, I was a single mom. My son was two years old when I became a single mom. And even though I had the support of my ex-husband and his lovely wife, you know, it's a lot. And I think it was, you know, making errors and making mistakes and letting business run me. And, you know, you just get to a point where you just have to say, this isn't working and I have to find a better way. And I think some of the biggest lessons for me were I had to learn to ask for help. And that's not always easy. I always felt that asking for help was a sign of weakness. And, oh, they're going to think, I can't do it all. I'm going to let them down. I'm going to disappoint people. And I realized that there was so much strength in asking for help because it allowed me to let other people shine. It allowed me to free up my time so I can focus on the right things to do. And it just really brought me so much closer to so many other people. And I think, you know, when you do that, you start to prioritize, you know, we're sold this bill of goods. Oh, you can do it all. And the truth is, no, you can't. And at the same time, you really shouldn't want to do it all. Doing it all doesn't make you better. So it really got me clear on, you know, what the right things are for me to do, who my ideal client is, how can I best serve them? And, you know, it's okay if someone doesn't like me, you know, I'm a good person. I don't need to be perfect. And the right people resonate with me. And it's, you know, when you build your business from integrity and working with the right people, the right things happen. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I think it's so easy to get caught up in what other people want from us and what's trying to do all the things. But when we recognize what it is I'm really good at, 
so natural to me. I think so many things we try and push and push and push so much, but the things that we're truly good at come so natural and we probably don't even recognize we're so good at it. Right. It's that, you know, law of authenticity. And I think, you know, when I was younger, you know, it was always about proving myself. And I think, you know, something about getting into my forties, it was just sort of like, this is who I am and learning some self-acceptance and some self-love and realizing that I don't need to be perfect. I'm perfectly imperfect the way that I am. And that is perfectly fine. Yeah. I mean, that's so interesting. You brought that up because I'm 38. I just had my 38th birthday and that's kind of the place that I've really gotten to the past year or so is like, that self-acceptance and recognizing that you're not going to be for everybody, but Mm -hmm. no, this is just who you're made to be and you're made perfect. Absolutely. And it'll get better. I love my forties. It has been so enriching and opening and creative. It's just, it's been fantastic. Awesome. So I know at one point, what was that moment that you realized that something had to change? We talked about that your son had said something to you. What was that? Yeah, it was, you know, an evening and I was watching him. He was probably about three, three and a half and, you know, trying to cook dinner on the phone with clients doing, you know, multitasking as so many of us try to do. And I remember he just started tugging on my shirt and he said, mommy, you're not paying attention to me. You know, and that was a real eye-opening moment is just that, you know, that this isn't working and I have too many irons in the fire. And even though I would love to work, he needs his mom too. So I knew that it wasn't about giving up work because I love to work and he loves that I work, but it was about, I need to be present where I need to be present. I need to start saying no. I need to start pulling back on things that are not my primary concern. I need to start time blocking and just really getting serious about things that are important to me. And I would say now I am, I'm a great mom, you know, I'm not perfect, but when I'm there, I'm there with him. I have so much more fun. I feel that my other relationships that I have have just grown. It's okay to let go. And I was trying to do everything. I was trying to please everyone. I didn't want to say no to any opportunity because I was building my business. And I was like, if I say no, then they're never going to come back. And I just had to learn again, the power in standing in your own truth. And that when you set boundaries, the right people will come to you. And it was really interesting. I remember I was managing at an office and Nicholas got sick and actually had to go into the hospital for several days. And I remember the phone calls coming in from the people in my office. And my thought was, I'm going to be in trouble. They're going to be mad at me. And instead I was met with, how is he doing? Do you need anything? Do you need us to go take out the dog? And it was the first time that I realized I've surrounded myself with the right people. You know, I've surrounded myself with people who see the abundance and who understand the same things that I do. And it was so beautiful and refreshing and freeing to just know that, you know, when you get clear, the right people show up in your world too. Mm, Yes. It's so, so true because I mean, once we're clear on those priorities and we can set those boundaries that are going to keep our priorities in place, like boundaries are so important. So what are some of the first couple boundaries that, you know, someone could really start to step into? Mm -hmm. I think the first one is, is time. You know, time is a very valuable commodity. We do not get rollover minutes like we do on our cell phones. So we need to really start looking at how we are investing our time. And I think we give away our time too easily. We time block things, whether it's for our family, for our personal life, you know, administrative things. And then somebody calls us and needs something. And our first thought is, okay, I'll drop what I am doing because their needs are more important. And I think that you have to really stop and ask yourself, if I stop doing the thing that I need to do, where am I going? If I say no to me, what am I saying yes to? If I choose this opportunity, what do I have to say no to? And really coming back to, does this make good business sense? Because not everything makes good business sense. I, I've had it before where training opportunities come to me. I'm going to have to fly to get there. It's not easy to get to. So it's going to be two days there, two days back. You know, I'm going to miss basically the entire week of work. Maybe that's the best business decision because it's my ideal target, but maybe it's not my target audience. So maybe it's not. And really starting to look at these and realizing that everything needs to go into your schedule, including your personal life as an appointment. And I think it's really hard to say no, but we say no all the time. We just say no to ourselves. And we have to start remembering that we need to start getting really clear 
And it's okay to say yes to ourselves, but we have to look at the bigger picture. So I think just really not giving away your time so easily. And before you agree to do something, just take a moment and just ask yourself, does this make good business sense? Is this in alignment with my overall goals? And if I say yes to this new thing, what is it that I have to say no to? And really get clear on if those are the right answers for you and guide by those principles. Yeah, always keep the reminder, anything you say yes to, you're saying no to something else and vice versa, you know, so our time is so valuable. You're right. It's the only thing that we can't really get back. So no. we need to be like, you know, really guarding that time mm-hmm. and using it wisely and recognizing that every time we say yes to a new client, we're saying no to our kids' baseball game. Or to another client. Because maybe if I was working on a report or a project for another client, you know, they're expecting that to get done. And if I stop doing that to go do something else, I'm saying no to the current client too. So it's really, you have to just look at it all around before you just immediately give up your time. Yes, so true. What are some of the ways that you found, you know, balance or harmony in your life and between this flow of like the business world and being that present parent? Mm -hmm. So some of the things that I do is I do feel a schedule is important. And I know that a lot of people, you know, don't like a schedule. They think it's very restrictive. But when you put your schedule together the right way, which is leading with your life first, you always have time for life. So one of the ways that I really focus on taking care of myself and having balance is the very first things that go in my schedule is time with my son, time for myself, time with my friends. So those are the things that go in my schedule first. And then I work around those because I always want to make sure I have that time. I would say the other thing I try to do is I really try to find harmony in the things that I already enjoy. So if I am looking to meet new people, it's not about going out and joining a new club. Maybe the clubs that I belong to or the gym or the classes that I'm taking, I can go deeper with some of those relationships. Maybe I already know a friend that can connect me with some other people. So I think really looking at what are the things I'm already doing and can I leverage some of those relationships or leverage the time that I'm there? And I really think you just need to call a time out every once in a while. Being that without COVID, I'm on the road quite a bit, sometimes, you know, 30 weeks out of the year. And I would say about every six weeks, I completely take like a weekend off and I just turn off everything. My son's with his dad and I just lay on the couch because you have to rejuvenate yourself. You know, we tend to think that self-care is selfish. Who am I to go get a massage? Who am I to take an afternoon off or just go to the movies in the middle of the day? But really, who are you not to? You need that to re-energize yourself. And we can't serve others when we are worn out and tired. So you need to do whatever you want to do. The funniest things that I do is Thanksgiving is my very favorite day of the year because I do absolutely nothing. My son is always with his dad and my family lives in a different state. So I usually just stay home and I do absolutely nothing. Uh And I have no drama. I get up when I want to get up. I maybe take two or three naps. I watch whatever movies I want. I eat ice cream. I do whatever I want and nobody bugs me for the entire day. And it's absolutely glorious because it's right in the middle of my busy season. And it is such a great way to just decompress and re-energize and just have some me time. You know, whether it's 15 minutes a day or an entire day, you got to take time for yourself. You got to love yourself. You got to like yourself. You got to start dating yourself because if you're not good with yourself, it's really hard to show up and be good for other people. Yeah. It's so important to just take time for yourself. You know, I think as moms, we kind of lose sight of that taking care of everyone else. And we Mm -hmm. have a hard time remembering how to take care of ourselves. Something, you know, I've struggled with burnout before. I've struggled with like having endless amount of to do's and it feels like it never gets done. And so you just work Mm -hmm. and work and work until it gets done and never does. And I had to, you know, take a step back. I remember when I worked a nine to five, I worked Monday through Friday, nine to five. Saturdays, I did nothing. Mm -hmm. Saturdays, I laid around the couch. I vegged out. I just like decompressed. And then Sunday, I was a busybody and I cleaned my whole house top to bottom. It's because I had that day of Saturday in between of like doing absolutely nothing. And then I was able to get all this stuff done. Yeah, exactly. And you just do, you know, and I know as moms, it's hard to do nothing. And that's why sometimes you need to, you know, communicate with your significant other. You need to communicate with your friends and sometimes, you know, get a buddy system together. And again, ask for help and be able to say, you know what? I'm ready to crash and burn. I have been going nonstop 
can I send my child over to your house for a sleepover? Or I need a nap. I remember, you know, asking my sister to come over because she lit near me and just saying, you know, can you just come over and take him to the park for two hours? I need to take a nap. But we have to, again, know those moments and not be afraid to ask for help. Going to our significant others and saying, you know what? Once a month, you go take a day off. Once a month, I'm going to go take a day off. And let's support each other in doing that. And with your significant other, don't forget those relationships. Just because you're a mom doesn't mean that you don't have to date your significant other. You know, you should go on date nights. You should get dressed up. You should go have fun and nurture those relationships with all your best friends. Take time to do those because those relationships energize us. And you're not just a mom. You're not just your business. You know, you're a person and you've got to take time for all of those. And that was a lesson I learned from my parents is they still went out on dates. They had four kids, but they would call a babysitter and they would go away, you know, a few times a year just for an overnight. You got to nurture those relationships. Yeah, it's so important. Relationships, they do energize us. I find myself to be a little bit of a homebody and I will not want to go out. But then the moment I do get dressed up and I go out, I find myself like, this is exactly what I needed. Absolutely. And even, you know, with us being so, so stuck at home, you know, I just noticed even in the morning, just putting on a little lipstick, you know, kind of doing my hair is like, it just kind of puts you together. And sometimes, you know, we just have to make kind of fake it till we make it. But you're right. Once you get up and going, it feels so good. But we have to make sure that we're carving out the time to do that because it is so easy to just go through the days and then say, oh, I've been working all day. I'm so tired. But you have to do it for you. Yeah. It just puts you in a whole different vibe and Mm -hmm. it's going to raise your spirits, it raise your vibe, and you're just going to be happier, a better person. People are going to want to be around you, you know, because you are, you know, in a better mood. Mm -hmm. You're just radiating that energy. Right. Yeah. And having that support team around you is so important because as moms, you know, we're so used to doing it all, but we can't do it all, all by ourselves, you know? And so whether you have, you know, a significant other is great, but if you don't have that, you know, parents, grandparents, neighbors, or, you know, do a mom swap. Mm -hmm. You just have to, you have to look for your support. You can't do it alone. You don't have to. There always is going to be somebody there. And like I said, you can't be afraid to ask for help and, you know, reach out and then give back to them if you see them needing a day off too. Right. Yeah, exactly. So as a woman who is new in business, I know you've worked with tons of clients, you know, in your consulting and training. What are some things that you see like over and over and over a common pitfalls, common things that women are just kind of getting stuck on, or if they could only focus on, you know, these two or three things, what would those be? You know, I think guilt is a big thing, especially if they're moms. When we're at work, we feel guilty because we're not taking care of our kids. When we're taking care of the kids, we feel like we're not working. So I think we need to let go of the guilt a little bit. And I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying to have the magic pill, but you just have to show up and just do your best. And you have to understand you're going to drop the ball and life will continue on. We have to start communicating with our people. You know, I started sharing my business goals with Nicholas when he was maybe eight or nine. And now every year when I do my business plan, he's a part of it. And I say, these are the goals that I have. And this is what it's going to take to get there. Do I have your support? Do you want me to change things? You know, so I make sure that he's a part of that with me. I share it with, you know, my ex and his wife and my family. So I think you have to communicate and just let go again of the guilt. It's just, it is what it is. And if you love working, don't be ashamed. The fact that you love working, it doesn't mean you don't love your kids, still love your kids too, but it's okay to love being a working mom too. And to have pride in that side of your life as well. So I think just, you know, showing up. And then I think the other thing, again, they don't know how to say no. So I think really learning how to say no and to set those boundaries and to just be honest with their time and to just say, you know, this is what I can do and this is what I'm not able to do. Mm, Yeah, that's so good. And mom guilt is so real. I struggle with that. I can remember even as a little girl, I remember being torn between being very ambitious and, you know, I didn't have a present parent. You know, my parents worked a lot. And I can actually remember um, being at the babysitters for 12 hours a day. And so mm-hmm. I didn't see a lot of my parents. And so I, as a young child, I knew that I wanted to be more present. I didn't want to always be working all the time. And so mm-hmm. I felt like this stare. 
I was very torn between being that working mom because I am ambitious and being that present parent. So I think it's important for moms to know that they can do both. They can. And and I think, again, what I have found too is, you know, tell the people when you're going to be with them. So it's like, I'll talk to my son and I'll say, okay, this is when I'm going to be there. Or I'll talk to my sisters. And when I'm there, be there. You know, and they will be able to forgive some of the other ones, the late nights here or the pickup a little bit late here, because when you're there, you're really there. And it could be little things. It could be just saying, we're going to have dinner together every night or three nights a week, we're going to have dinner. It could be Sunday mornings are our time together. Could be, I'm going to pick you up from school early this one day. So it, it can be whatever it is that you want it to look like. I know my mom, as I mentioned, there was four of us in the family. She did different things with each of us. My thing and my time with my mom is we would go on walks together. You know, she would take one of my sisters and they would go for Chinese food, you know, but when she was there, that was individual time that she had for us. And she was a working mom too. My parents would go and do their work, come home. We would have dinner. They would help us with our homework and then they would do their homework, the work that they needed to do. So again, if you're going to choose to have kids, you've got to choose to make it a priority because they didn't ask to be bored. So we have to be true and fair to them too, but you can make time for it. You just have to really be stringent with it and you have to really be honest about it and and guard it and protect it. Yeah. Yeah. That's so important just to know like, what is it that you want and be willing to put in the work to get it? Absolutely. Yeah. So, and it is work. uh, (laughs) Yeah, it is work. It's not easy, but it is doable. And I mean, there's challenges to every career and, you know, work at home mom is no different. You know, one of the difficulties is having that balance between work and home because at home, your work is always there. You don't always have that closed door Mm -hmm. and clocking in and clocking out. So the boundaries do get crossed and blurred a little bit. But I think if you do have some good boundaries, you know, that's one of the things that I've had to learn is just knowing when am I working? and When am I not working? And I used to just work all the time. I mean, with our phones and our computers at our disposal, we could be working at any time of the day, but our kids, you know, they do need that quality time. And my daughter is one that she'll come and she'll ask me, can you just play Barbies with me, mom, Mm -hmm. you know, and just having that space of knowing when are you working and when do you have time to just play and be Mm -hmm. that mom. And be present. Yep. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. So I know you have a new book coming out. I do. Tell us all about that. Thank you. So it's a collaboration with me and 15 other women from around the world. It's called Women Who Boss Up. And we are sharing our stories, challenges, you know, the struggles, the real stories behind success. And so that is going to be coming out later this month. And it's just, it's, it's an amazing group of women with just so many powerful stories about how you can still lift yourself up and really go out there and do great things. And then I'm also working on my third book, which hopefully will come out in the spring. And it's actually going to be a guidebook for the mompreneur and really giving some easy and real tools to help us maneuver through the day-to-day pitfalls, challenges, obstacles of life. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So where can they get more information about your book? Fantastic. Well, the best place is probably just to go to my website, which is www.senspire.com. And it's spelled C-E-N-S-P-I-R-E. It's a combination of being centered and inspired. And on there, it has links for my books to order. You can reach out to me. It has my blogs and just everything you want. And then you can always follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So they can find me all there. Okay, awesome. And we will have those links in the show notes too. Beautiful. Yeah, so I'm so excited to have you. Thank you so much for being here. And yeah, if you want to connect with Clara or you want to get a copy of that book, learning from all different kinds of entrepreneurs and moms in business who are doing it all and really have secrets of what it really took to be successful, then have the links below and you can check those out. Perfect. Thank you so much for having me. I love being able to share ideas and hopefully people found value and can go out there and be a little bit more inspired and empowered. Did you love this episode? I would love to connect with you and hear all of your ahas. Do me a favor, take a screenshot right now. Tag me on IG, your biggest takeaway. You can find the podcast at 
Moms in Biz underscore podcast. And if you haven't joined the party yet, we are hanging out over on Facebook. We have a private group called Moms in Business. And this group is all about connection, community, and collaboration. So if you haven't joined us yet, please do come over and join in on the conversation.